Welcome to this meeting of the Santa Barbara City Council. Uh, today is March 2nd, 2021. Um, we'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Will you take uh, the roll? Ms. Clerk? Yes, Councilmember Alejandro Gutierrez. Here. Councilmember Harmon. Here. Councilmember Seddon. Here. Councilmember Friedman. Here. Councilmember Jordan. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Oscar Gutierrez. Present. And Mayor Maria. Here. Thank you very much. Um, we go to our ceremonial items. Ms. Clerk, would you read the first one into the record? Yes, item one, Peace Corps Week, February 28th through March 6th, 2021. And here's our proclamation, and we look forward to hearing uh, remarks from um, the Peace Corps organization group, the members uh, who will speak after my uh, proclamation. So, whereas the Peace Corps was this, established by President John F. Kennedy by executive order on March 1st, 1961, with the mission to promote world peace and friendship by fulfilling three goals. One, to help the people of interested countries in meeting their need for trained men and women. Two, to help promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the people served. And three, to help promote a better understanding of other peoples on the part of Americans. And whereas the Peace Corps uh, partners with communities abroad to develop sustainable solutions for the world's most pressing challenges, and its volunteers carry out people-to-people -people public service and citizen diplomacy at the grassroots level, addressing challenges in agriculture, community economic development, education, environment, health, and youth development across the globe, and whereas Peace Corps volunteers return home as global citizens with unique cross-cultural perspectives, as well as leadership, language, teaching, and community development skills that provide value in today's global economy. And whereas today, six decades after its founding, with more than 240,000 Americans having served as Peace Corps volunteers in 142 countries, the Peace Corps remains committed to its ideals and its volunteers leave a legacy in the lives and communities of the people they teach, educate, and inspire. And whereas the University of California, Santa Barbara has a long and solid history of producing Peace Corps volunteers and Santa Barbara County has a strong presence of returned Peace Corps volunteers with an active local Peace Corps association and whereas Peace Corps Week is an annual event commemorating President Kennedy's establishment of the Peace Corps on March 1st, uh, 1961, celebrating all the ways that Peace Corps makes a difference at home and abroad while renewing the agency's commitment to service. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Kathy Murillo, do hereby proclaim February 28th through March 6, 2021 as Peace Corps Week, commending the Santa Barbara Peace Corps Association LA Regional Peace Corps Office and local returned Peace Corps volunteers for advancing the, pre the Peace Corps mission locally in Santa Barbara. Thank you. And do we have a, a, a speaker, Ms. Uh, Ms. Gorman? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Naomi Kovacs on the line. Ms. Kovacs, I've unmuted you. I see you're unmuted, so you may go ahead. Well, thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, Mayor Murillo and council members. I'm Naomi Kovacs, and um, it's my pleasure to be the one accepting this wonderful and beautiful proclamation. I personally served as both a Peace Corps volunteer and later as a technical trainer of Peace Corps trainees in Cameroon, which is in West Central Africa. It was a transformative and life-defining experience, as it is for most volunteers. Uh, I am currently president of the Santa Barbara Peace Corps Association, and in that capacity, I want to extend our organization's sincere appreciation of your recognition of the Peace Corps 60th anniversary 
and Peace Corps Week, which is, as you noted, an annual worldwide event commemorating President Kennedy's establishment of the Peace Corps on March 1st, 1961. We're also grateful for your recognition of the Santa Barbara Peace Corps Association, the LA Regional Peace Corps Office, and our local return Peace Corps volunteers for their roles in advancing the Peace Corps mission locally here in Santa Barbara County. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> as noted in your proclamation, UCSB does have a long and solid history of producing Peace Corps volunteers, and Santa Barbara County has a very strong presence of returned Peace Corps volunteers who've come home from their service as global citizens with skills and perspectives that provide value in our community here. If anyone tuning in right now is interested in learning more about the Peace Corps, they can go to peacecorps.gov online. And if anyone's interested in consulting with our local group um, to connect, if you're a local returned Peace Corps volunteer and aren't already part of our group, or if you're a teacher or a representative for an organization who would like a speaker to come and speak about one of the countries in which we served or about Peace Corps in general or about our personal Peace Corps experiences, um, please feel free to Google Santa Barbara Peace Corps Association and get in touch with us. So thanks again for this recognition and for the opportunity to say a few words. Thanks, Ms. Kovacs. Thanks for serving in the Peace Corps and for organizing the group here in Santa Barbara. We look forward to those events when things get back to normal. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item two. Ms. Clerk, if you would read that into the record and I would call up Mr. Casey. This is his item. Yes, item two is Employee Recognition Service Award Pins. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Members. As you know, each month I like to come to City Council and recognize city employees for achieving certain milestones in their service to the City of Santa Barbara. So with your permission, I'd like to read their names into the record and congratulate them uh, on their accomplishments. With five years of service to the City of Santa Barbara, Megan Arciniega, Project Planner, Community Development Department. John Frolicker, Identifi identification technician with the police department and Christopher Mendoza, automotive services writer, public works department. With 15 years of service, Michelle Sanchez, accounting assistant, finance department. Nicole Casper, police property evidence assistant, police department. David Thornburg, senior real property agent, public works department. And Michael Clunin, project engineer one, public works department. With 20 years of service to the city, Trevor Jones, fire engineer, fire department, Brad Waters, fire captain, fire department, Matt Wilson, fire captain, fire department, Barrett Hoffman, fire captain, fire department, Rob Jensen, fire engineer, fire department, and Chad Hunt, police sergeant, police department. With 25 years of service to the city, Sean Mapes, Fleet Service Technician, Public Works Department. Carlos Yamas, Meter Reader, Water Distribution OIT, Public Works Department. And with 30 years of service to the City of Santa Barbara, Leif Reynolds, Supervising Engineer, Public Works Department. Thank you, Madam. Wow, <laughs> thank you. And we congratulate all these employees for their long years of service and, and we thank them. Um, Mr. Casey, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, at this point. Yes, Madam Mayor, there's just one minor change uh, on item number eight. It's the setting a date for an appeal. Uh, the subject line incorrectly sets the date for a public hearing regarding the Planning Commission's denial for the West Side Paseos project. It should read set a date for a public hearing regarding the Historic Landmarks Commission's denial for West Side Paseos project. Uh, the recommendation of the council action is correct. It was just a, a mistake on the subject line. So with that correction, we think it's still appropriate to move forward with setting the date. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we'll go to public comment then. Uh, this is the public's opportunity to talk to us about items that are not on the official agenda. Uh, thanks to my council members who are coming onto the screen for this um, portion of the, of the meeting. Ms. Clerk, are there folks raising their hands? Um, and I would tell the public this is the time to raise your hand for open public comment. Yes, Madam Mayor, we have a few people who have indicated they wish to speak on public comment. Okay. Uh, Anna Marie Gott, Matt Lowe, 
And if anyone else would like to speak, we have several other people logged on. If you do wish to speak in public comment, you can raise your hand in the app or send me a message in the app. So Anna Marie Gott, please go ahead. Good afternoon, public, uh, city council. Last week, uh, two council members brought an item to the agenda. Um, and that item was a vote on Medicare for all, which none of you have the authority to actually make a real decision on. All you could do was support a resolution and that's it. So what can you actually do? You could actually vote to actually have a living wage in Santa Barbara. So I'd like to know which one of you two are gonna put that on the agenda. Because as you know, the vast majority of our residents in the city of Santa Barbara do not actually even earn the median income of the county. The median income of the county is $20,000 more than the median income earner, a household here, excuse me, in Santa Barbara, $20,000. I mean, that's a lot of money and not one council that I can recall in terms of any agenda items since 2015 have actually addressed this. So isn't it about time that two of you actually bring to the council an item that would actually really benefit your residents? Second item, you know, in 2015, I started coming to city council meetings. I think it was about 2017 that I recognized that some of your board meetings as well as commission meetings do not post an email address on the agenda. So unless you know who to contact at the city and sometimes it might just be by phone, you cannot over the weekend send an email regarding an item on an agenda. Are any of you aware of that? Have any of you one year into the pandemic asked to actually have minimum requirements for your agendas for each of your boards? I bet you haven't. And do you know why I asked that? Because it was really surprising to me when last week I actually went, uh, listened in on the police commission meeting with the fire, uh, police and fire commission board uh, meeting, they didn't have an email address and there was no way for anyone to find out that information. They had to actually make a phone call. And this is the fire and police board commission. And someone had a problem in the middle of the meeting trying to actually uh, make a public comment they knew they were having a problem and they couldn't actually make a comment because of they had no connection. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Our next speaker is Matt Lowe. Mr. And after Matt Lowe, we'll have Katie Mickey. So Mr. Lowe, you are unmuted on our end. If you can unmute yourself. There you go. Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, city council. Hi, mayor. Um, uh, kind of ironically going on the tail end of what Anna Marie was saying, I am uh, calling in today to talk about um, accessibility and the need for funding that the city can put forth. I've mentioned it four times in my meetings and I've connected with Matt Four, who is you know city admin um, about these issues. And there's not really any funding or prioritization going towards accessibility for the city. Um, and there's outreach efforts and people are doing this work for free and it's not work that should be done or put on people that are dealing with the inaccessibility of city things to be, to be doing this work. And so, um, I understand there's, um, access, uh, commissions, um, and, you know, things of that sort that are, that are putting forth, um, proposals for the city. Um, but then it's reached out to people that. Um, the city doesn't have an, an ADA person to figure out what is ADA compliant for the city's website or for the city streets, um, you know, um, keeping the sidewalks clear for people with 
um, wheelchairs and people with visual impairments to make sure that they can get through safely. Um, and, and there's just many things that I think that is being overlooked and um, that there's a, a level of equity that isn't being uh, looked at because, uh, um, and it, it, I'm really starting to feel it as the city. Uh, you know, I speak here many times and I'm part of the city in many different facets and I feel overlooked. Um, and so it's just, uh, you know, I provide a lot for the city, I think. And it, it, it um, I don't know, it feels like I'm, I'm being providing something, but it's not really being provided back for me. And so if uh, there can be a line item added to the budget for, you know, somebody that is uh, focuses on ADA compliance or accessibility, um, I'd really appreciate that. And I know my access advisory um, commission folks really would as well too, um, because it, it, we really feel that it's missing and I'm feeling the weight and the pressure of it um, in my participation in the city. So um, yeah, appreciate you and appreciate your work. And just if you can, you know, pay attention to that, that'd be really, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Lowe. Next speaker, please. Very good. Our next speaker is Katie Mickey, and she is the last person who has indicated that they wish to speak in public comment. Katie Mickey, please go ahead. Okay. Hello, City Council and Madam Mayor. I am, I am here to call your attention to fire safety issues surrounding small cell installations. Small cell wireless facilities are electrical facilities. They are vulnerable to structural failure. In addition, electrical usage is often measured by smart meter within a large number of cell towers. Smart meters can cause fires. Um, what we learned from our experts was that under certain circumstances, the surge protection in smart meters is inadequate. Smart meters utilize what is called veracitor as surge protection for up to 350 volts. That is the level of surge protection you would have to typically find in a television set. Lightning strikes cause surges of voltage in the multi-thousands of volts. In those cases, the veracitor would be inadequate. When these small cells combust, they take at least two hours to power down. You have been told um, what you cannot do regarding small cell antennas. And Safe Tech SBC is wanting to inform you what you can do. You can adopt conditions to be added to the telecom generally applicable health and safety requirements. Safe Tech SBC is requesting that our regulatory ordinance include strong fire safety requirements that include siding off on these installations by our fire chief. Um, I am here to remind you of the urgency to ensure the safety of our high fire and severe fire zones. I strongly urge you to adopt Safe Tech SBC's revisions to our telecom ordinance. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Mickey. Did anyone else raise their hands, Ms. Clerk? No, Madam Mayor, that's the final public comment. Okay, we'll close public comment then and we'll keep moving on our agenda um, to the consent calendar. Um, Ms. Clerk, there's items to read, I assume. Yes, Madam Mayor. Item three, adoption of an ordinance establishing a 90-year affordability control covenant for Santa Barbara Affordable Housing Group's Via Diego appointment apartments located at 3931 through 3937 Via Diego. Recommendation of council adopt by reading of title only an ordinance of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara approving an affordability control covenant imposed on real property located at 3931 through 3937 Via Diego for a period of 90 years for the Santa Barbara Affordable Housing Group and authorizing the Community Development Director to execute such agreement and related documents as necessary. Item four, annual authorization for the allocation of the city's share of transportation development fund, development act funds for bicycle and pedestrian projects. Recommendation the council adopt by reading of title only, a resolution of the council of the city of Santa Barbara, authorizing the filing of a claim with the Santa Barbara County Association of Governments for allocation of 78,745 the Transportation Development Act funds for fiscal year 2022. Item three, resolution to adopt an update to the Affordable Housing Policies and Procedures Manual. Recommendation of the council adopt by reading of title only, a resolution of the council of the city of Santa Barbara adopting an update to the Affordable Housing Policies and Procedures Manual. And that's all. Thank you. Um, 
members of the public, if you have a public comment on any of the consent calendar items, that's number three through um, eight, raise your hand. Ms. Clerk, anybody wanting to speak? Madam Mayor, yes. Uh, e. Howard Green has raised his hand. I'm not sure which item he is speaking on. I can see if I can find out. Mr. Green, we need to read it into the record. So let us know. And then Ms. Gutierrez, you want us to pull an item? No. Um, no, it's just waiting for public comment. Okay. Madam Mayor, I, I'll just uh, unmute Mr. Green and, and ask okay. him. Here. Mr. Green, what item are you wanting to speak on, sir? Uh, number eight, I've sent it to um, uh, the chat line, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, Ms. Clerk, would you read number eight into the record? And this is the one where we changed the title, so thanks. Very good. Thank you, and, and Mr. Green, I do see your, your chat response. Thank you. Item eight, set a date for public hearing regarding Historic Landmark Commission's denial for Westside Paseos project. Recommendation the Council A set the date of March 23rd, 2021 at 2 p.m. for hearing the appeal filed by the City of Santa Barbara Public Works Department of the Historic Landmarks Commission's HLC decision to deny the Westside Paseos project, PLN 2020-00339, proposed within El Pueblo Viejo Landmark District, EPV. The portions of this project located at multiple right-of-way parcels within EPV include traffic signals, traffic diverter medians, access ramps, landscaping, brick pavers, relocated streetlights, high visibility bike lanes at the Sola and Santa Barbara Street intersection, and improved crossing with two curb extensions, brick pavers, landscaping, relocated streetlights, hallway stop signs, and green-backed bike roadway stencils at the intersection of Sola and Garden Streets. <clears throat> Mr. Green, go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is an item that I'm having watched uh, Transport uh, Coordinating Committee Circulation Committee last um, last week because I am that um, Mr. Dayton uh, showed to that committee was not the same diam apparently that he showed we'll see. Uh, I think it is uh, a community gap as being planned. Uh, if I were the LC, I probably would be against this, even though I was on the uh, TCC at the time we uh, built plan. It was a great ugly green block, uh, the most vibrant green I can imagine. Not something that showed the character of planters, dividers, and so forth that um, would be employed. Now, when they come before you in three weeks, and it's strange that it has to be long, but okay. Um, I, I hope they will have taken time to design a nice looking uh, Pueblo style plant that they plan to put in there. I think it was failure of staff work that the HLC to, yeah, I don't think they probably care, quite frankly, about, um, or they shouldn't have to care, about uh, the, the proper safety stand. Um, bicycling in this town, the bikes now have uh, risen to a, a, a term, I believe. <laughs> um, it's too important that the ACLs block progress. The role to solve, the role to decide. Look forward to that in a couple of weeks. Thank Thanks for your information. And yeah, please do check in when we have the actual appeal. Um, Next Matt, speaker. Very good. Madam okay. Mayor, we do have two, two additional persons have raised their hand to speak. 
um, uh, Ms. Gott, and then Mr. Cannell, I believe Mr. Cannell is speaking on number eight also. Mr. Cannell, please let me know if not. Ms. Gott, please go ahead. Good, good afternoon, City Council. Uh, the reason I'm speaking on this item today is because I would like you uh, to one, get a hold of the actual appeal in advance if you haven't already received that. The reason I am going to suggest that is because, you know, this all seems to be driven by some funds that are apparently supposed to be, I guess, released in, in June of this year. And if you actually take a look at the heat maps from the police department regarding where accidents of bicycles as bicyclists as well as pedestrians occur, it's really kind of surprising why we are not focused um, on some different uh, locations in the city and why we have chosen this route. It, the reason I say this route is because this route goes through two roundabouts. One roundabout is at the corner of Sola and Olive. That's right in the middle of Bungalow Haven. And for years, I took care of that roundabout. Let me describe some of the things that I have personally either witnessed or heard about, which are people driving through the, the roundabout going downhill because they speed through that intersection. People having, you know, when they make a left-hand turn, not even, or a right-hand turn, actually running into the roundabout because they don't really care about um, following any of our uh, traffic, uh, uh, you know, diversion techniques, including roundabouts. They'll just plow right through them. I've witnessed accidents, and I know neighbors who have seen and actually have their children in accidents right at that corner because of speeding. And you want to have a bike boulevard put right, not only through that roundabout, but through another one on a hill directly before you get to the high school. Why in the world wasn't Canon Perdido, um, or I think it's uh, East, or or East Ortega and part of West Ortega, why, what, why weren't they actually turned into a bike boulevards and having those streets go one way with head-in parking. I don't think that was even considered because those would actually take the children directly um, to either the junior high or to a street that is very, very low traffic next to the high school that would run right, through, right next to uh, the uh, Boys and Girls Club and straight up the hill to the high school. So it makes no sense. And I'd really ask that you get some additional information about the actual workshops that happened and what was proposed, because I don't think anything like that was proposed. Thank you. Another speaker, Mr. Cannell on this item. Uh, yes, Mr. Cannell has raised his hand. I'm not sure which consent item, but let's go ahead. We'll find out. Mr. Cannell, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I don't know what item number eight is, but the reason for my call is the green patches in the middle of State Street. Uh, my phone has been ringing off the hook from merchants and office users just appalled at what they're turn what you're turning State Street in into. It's a carnival. You've got homeless around, you've got people going everywhere, and now you've got these green patches. It, it, it's, it's, it's absurd. It's, it's actually degrading the street. The merchants are unhappy. The, the, the office users are unhappy. Mr. And Cannell, all I hear is negative comments. That, that was for open public comment. You, this was about bicycles, so okay, I let you speak just for a little bit. But we got your message about the green paint on State Street. Uh, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll go to another speaker if there's another one. Madam Mayor, that's the final speaker on consent. Okay. We'll close uh, the consent calendar. If there's no other uh, objection, we'll waive for the reading and I'll entertain a motion to move the consent calendar forward with the change to the headline in um, number eight. 
Make that motion, Madam Mayor. Okay. I'll second it. And Mr. Friedman, a second. Any other discussion? Take a roll call vote on the consent calendar, please, Ms. Quick. Thank you. This is the motion for the entirety of the consent calendar, noting the change to the subject in item eight. Motion by Councilmember Jordan, seconded by Councilmember Friedman. Councilmember Alejandro Gutierrez. Yes. Councilmember Harmon. Yes. Councilmember Snedden. Yes. Councilmember Friedman. Yes. Councilmember Jordan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Oscar Gutierrez. Aye. Mayor Maria. Aye. That was unanimous. We'll move those items forward. We'll go to the next uh, item on the agenda, which is a report from the Ordinance Committee. Mr. Jordan, this is a topic that we'll have later on on our own uh, meeting here, but we want to hear from you. What happened at the Ordinance? We um, had a healthy conversation and made several recommendations that you'll hear about on item 10. Thanks. Mr. Gutierrez, did you have something to add at this point? You you turned on your camera. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, that's <laughs> okay. So let's go to item nine. Uh, Ms. Clerk. I, nine, adoption of resolution for five-year measure A local program of projects for fiscal years 2022 through 2026 public hearing. A recommendation that council adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara adopting the five-year Measure A local program of projects for fiscal years 2022 through 2026. All right. Who is our staff member today on this? Ms. Grant, welcome. The floor is yours. Thanks. Okay. Well, good afternoon, Mayor Maria and council members. I'm Jessica Grant with the City of Santa Barbara Public Works Department. Just going to turn up my volume a little bit. Um, so I'm here to discuss today the Measure A five-year program of projects, and I will provide a background on Measure A and discuss why it's so vital for our streets, capital, and operations programs, as well as provide you some examples of what Measure A helped fund. Next slide. In 2008, Santa Barbara County residents approved Measure A, which is a half a cent sales tax for transportation projects. Every year, the Santa Barbara Council of Association of Governments, also known as SBCAG, is responsible for allocating the Measure A funds. And SBCAG provides the city um, with the Measure A revenue estimates and what portion goes to the city of Santa Barbara. Uh, we are required to go to the city council every year with a resolution to adopt the five-year program of projects. And then it's usually around this time of year. And then the SBCAG board goes, um, here's the entire Measure A program in April. Uh, roughly for the next five years, we'll be receiving um, approximately 4 million per year. Um, it's slightly on the lower end of 4 million for next year due to the uh, pandemic. And then there's a slight drop in fiscal year 25 uh, that represents um, a bond that is helping pay for the Highway 101 um, HOB project. Next slide. So Measure A is vital for our streets, operations, and capital programs. As Measure A is a link between the programs. So Measure C is more on the operations side, um, and then it's also a link to our streets program um, capital side. So what's really cool about Measure A is it funds for crews, it gets contractors, equipment, but it also helps fund for grant uh, capital um, projects for in terms of matching funds or to maybe co um, cover anticipated grant shortfalls. Mm -hmm. The next few slides will focus on some of our work efforts. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So this is a photo from a paving project that's happening now on Las Canelas Road. And a big part of Measure A is to help supplement our pavement maintenance program. That includes crack ceiling, slurry seal, uh, asphalt overlay, uh, and reconstruction um, to maintain accessible driving surfaces of our roads. 
Uh, we have approximately uh, 245 miles of paved roadways in the city. Measure A also assists with the bridge preventative maintenance program for minor repairs, such as bridge railing repairs or uh, concrete repairs. Uh, scour repairs, etc. Uh, we have 71 city owned bridges. And Measure A also helps for to fund engineering services, both with capital and the operations side. An example with capital projects, again, is to help um, for matching funds for the active transportation program grants, the highway bridge program grants, and the highway safety improvement program grant program. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, Measure A helps with bridge uh, post bridge construction. So um, some of the uh, required monitoring program for landscaping and associated restoration that's common with a lot of our bridge projects. And so it help uh, cover that maintenance period, which is uh, typically runs five years per bridge uh, project. Next slide. With respect to traffic safety, Measure A funds hardscape improvements, signs, pavement marking, minor traffic signal changes, raised pavement markings. Um, and this is all to help with, again, roadway safety and any collision patterns that we might be detecting in our roadways. Um, again, and Measure A can also help fund it for matching funds for larger projects. These are just a couple of images um, in the vicinity of Peabody Elementary, it was funded from the Highway Safety Improvement Program with Measure A as being matching funds. Next slide. Measure A can also help with storm drain repair. Uh, this is just a photo of some of the crews with the um, doing some work with the catch basin. Another one is of the image to the far right is the storm drain repair that was, I believe, on Oliver Road. Next slide. Measure A also helps supplement uh, some funding for the Lower Mission Creek project. Uh, this is a really cool photo. This kicked off the entire project, which is this is a long time project, multi year. But this was a box culvert that went underneath the, the railroad uh, tracks. Uh, currently, there's some work that the county and city are collaborating with. Um, on the reaches just between Highway 101 and Gutierrez Street. And really Measure A helps with some of the staff time review as well as uh, permitting for that work. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Uh, Measure A also helps with the sidewalk maintenance. Uh, this is just some photos you see to the right of some minor sidewalk infill and then um, a sidewalk repair as well. And then also very popular funding source for to fund all of our sidewalk access ramps uh, that are needed throughout our city. Next slide. And finally, Measure A uh, assists with the Easy Lift uh, program that uh, we fund approximately a quarter million dollars uh, for this program. Um, it is managed by Easy Lift. Um, and it's basically for providing transportation with people for limited mobility. Next slide. So as discussed, Measure A plays a vital role um, for both our streets maintenance and capital projects. And we are very grateful for this funding source. Uh, with that, we request that council adopt a resolution to um, approve the five-year program of projects. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Grant. The, um, the floor is open for questions from the council members. I'm not seeing any. Um, it's real bread and butter public works topics. Um, the, let's see if there's public comment, Ms. Grant. Uh, Madam Clerk, anyone wanting to speak on these items? Hi, Madam Mayor. No public comment on these items. Okay, we'll close public comment and uh, go to our council, <clears throat> Ms. Snedden, and then Mr. Friedman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to comment that it's so great to see the roads taken care of and those particularly Las Canoas and then 
near Peabody there and then the storm drains and it's really um, just wanted to commend you for the great work and, and planning on measure A and great use of those funds. And I'm happy to make the, the motion to adopt the resolution. Thanks, Mr. Friedman. I'll second the motion and just wanna thank Ms. Grant and all of our public works staff. I think um, we're very fortunate to live in a community with uh, measure A and measure C. And I think that there's, uh, we're seeing a lot of the, the benefits of those too. So uh, thank you for the residents for supporting those those programs and uh, so I'll second the motion. Thanks. If there's no other comment, we'll take a roll call vote. I, I'll certainly be voting for the motion with thanks to our, our staff and <clears throat> funding sources. Thank you. This is for item number nine for the staff recommendation. A motion by council member Sneddon, seconded by council member Friedman. Council member Harmon. Yes. Council member Sneddon. Yes. Council member Friedman. Yes. Council member Jordan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Oscar Gutierrez. Aye. Council member Alejandro Gutierrez. Yes. Mayor Maria. Aye. Okay, that was unanimous. Thank you to everyone. And moving on to item number 10, if you would read that into the record, ma'am. Very good. Item 10, adoption of enabling ordinance and funding authorization to support the community benefit district for coast village area and city. And I'll just read recommendation A, the council introduced and subsequently adopt by reading of title only an ordinance of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara amending the Santa Barbara Municipal Code by adding chapter 4.45 relating to community benefit districts. Thanks. Mr. Harris, um, thank you for being here. Certainly. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of the council and the public. Jason Harris, Economic Development Manager for the city. I'm presenting the staff presentation on the Community Benefit District Enabling Ordinance and Recommendations. Next slide, please. So you may recall recently on February 8th, 2021, council reviewed the Coast Village Association's request of funding and a suggestion that the city adopt an enabling ordinance to set a petition threshold and a term different than state law to form a community benefit district. Council indicated support of this effort and directed staff to return with an ordinance and authorization. That's item before you today. Community benefit districts are special benefit districts created for the purpose of establishing a stable revenue source to fund special benefit services within a targeted business district. Property owners within a district once approved through a Proposition 218 public hearing process would pay property assessments to fund special services above and beyond general municipal service levels. And these assessments may pay for services such as sidewalk sweeping, additional sidewalk sweeping, beautification programs, district branding, marketing and promotions. The Coast Village Association is seeking a $30,000 uh, funding request from the city to help pay for the consultant services to prepare the formation documents. They've raised 30,000 uh, towards this effort. The city will also incur up to a $10,000 in outside legal services to review and prepare the necessary city documents to the process. The Coast Village Association are recommending the city adopt an enabling ordinance that sets the petition threshold to 30% in initial, initial district term to 20 years in order to recognize the low rate of return of Maine the mail-in petitions and non-engaged address non-engaged property owners as well as the cost of seeking a renewal of the district. This item was heard by the ordinance committee earlier today who have recommendations that differ from the staff recommendations before you. Next slide, please. The state's property and business improvement district or PBID law of 1994 provides legal authority for cities to establish community benefit districts. However, the improvement district law has certain features that create practical difficulties in establishing and managing these districts. It's a two-step process. The first step is a petition process. It requires more than 50% of the property owners to return a petition in support of the effort. This petition does not form the new district. It just establishes the assessment ballot process, which is the second step, which requires a 50% ballots of support. So that first step, the petitions, that can be changed uh, locally, and that is the ordinance before you today. Uh, staff is recommending lowering that to 40%. As you'll hear shortly, the ordinance committee uh, recommended lowering it to 30. 
there is no ability to change the pedalit process. That is a, a 50 plus percent um, binding majority requirement. The state law also establishes new district assessments uh, be established for five-year terms and when they are renewed for 10 years terms uh, by establishing as a charter city and enabling ordinance, those, those conditions can be changed. The ordinance committee uh, suggested a renewal uh, of up to 20 years uh, without requiring a petition process. So a modification that was in the ordinance before you. 22 charter cities uh, throughout California have adopted enabling ordinances, uh, lowering the petition thresholds and establishing longer initial terms. Uh, and they are referenced in the staff report. Next slide, please. So before you is the staff recommendation highlight. I made reference to the changes uh, by the ordinance committee. And so uh, we can reference those here shortly, but uh, that uh, establishing a lower petition threshold, staff recommended 40%, uh, ordinance committee uh, is making a recommendation at 30. Uh, the five-year initial term uh, is still in the ordinance. Uh, and that is allowing for a renewal up to 20 years uh, without a petition um, process. Uh, as that second bullet point, you just change that five-year uh, five year renewal without petitions to 20 years as recommended by the ordinance committee. And likewise, the authorization uh, to utilize $40,000 of Measure C business corridor funds for the collective effort and a loan of, of, of that of $30,000 uh, to Coast Village Association, the city would uh, collect those monies uh, uh, through the assessments as they're collected in the future. So with that, uh, I am concluding the staff presentation. Uh, next slide is just the questions. We should probably leave the recommendations up in case there's any questions and I am available. Thank you so much. Are there questions from the council members at this point? Uh, Mr. Friedman? Uh, Madam Mayor, I just have a Question, maybe Councilmember Jordan. I just want to understand what the ordinance committee uh, did. They, they lowered to thirty, and then if if you could clarify, maybe Mr. Jordan, if you could clarify um, the five-year petition, uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, thanks. So, I have another. I think a omission or correction too on what we just heard. So the. Initial term as a charter city, we can pick, I believe, anything up to 15 or 20 years. The uh, the trade-off there is that you're establishing um, this local district with no track record and the level of, of comfort that you have on putting that long of a term in initially. We had uh, discussion with um, Council Member Snedden, I think, uh, leaning towards a 15 year term. Um, Council member Oscar Gutierrez and I were um, recommending a five year term, but we were softening the renewal rather than asking the district to jump through the more extensive hoops of an expensive and longer petition period followed by a ballot period for a longer than five year renewal. We recommended that they be allowed up to a 20 year renewal with just the ballot measure um, process. So short term, initial term to see how it fares. And if all is going well, the flexibility to then adopt a longer term um, with less bureaucracy and cost to the organization for the renewal. Um, Mr. Harris also mentioned the 30% threshold, which we I think agreed that uh, that would bode well across the entire city as a reasonable number to get in just to start the process, but you still have to go through the ballot process to get the 50% plus one to adopt it. And I either I wasn't paying attention, but I didn't notice too. Um, we also recommended to um, lower the threshold to pursue disestablishment if you're unhappy with the district, I believe the staff report says a 40% threshold. We we and Coast Village Road have no problem lowering that to only a 30% threshold. So if you're unhappy with it during your term as a member of the of the PBID, um, it's just three in 10 to initiate a, a disestablishment uh, process rather than four in 10. So it puts more power back in any disaffected members to pursue change. I hope that didn't further confuse it. 
No, not for me, Mr. Mr. Friedman. Just uh, to clarify, so every five years, then it would need to come back up for a vote, or or it's just an automatic. So first, you first would be five. They would have the choice after that of selecting any term for renewal up to twenty, but without having to go through the same double process as they did at the initial five five year term. Instead of having to do petition process, um, get legal help, pay for all of that. They would go right to the balloting of 50% plus one approving the extension. And it would not be for five years. It would be any term they select up to what the state allows of a maximum of 20. Okay, thank you. Well, Mr. Harris, can you come back please? Um, I guess I'll just to tease out the question. So if after how many years and then people were not happy with the assessment and wanted to undo it, how would they how would they get out of it? So uh, as indicated, it's uh, the ordinance would establish 30% uh, pre uh, representation of, of owners would just submit a written petition to the city uh, seeking a disestablishment. And and they can do that at, at any term, any point during the term uh, is my understanding. So they don't need to wait for a renewal or wait to the five-year mark. They could do that, you know, at, at year four, at year three, uh, or if they sought an extension at year twelve. Um, and uh, yes. Okay, Ms. Gutierrez, questions. This question for Mr. Harris. Uh, could you? I know you explained it to me, but the second bullet point. So forty percent of the Measure C business. Uh, Measure C money, and then thirty percent loan. Can just yeah, in simple terms. Certainly. So uh, overall, uh, there's a forty thousand dollar expense uh, to help establish this. Of that, thirty thousand would be provided to Coast Village Association. They've hired a consultant, uh, and they that consultant prepares a management plan, et cetera. Ten thousand. So the remaining uh, monies, the difference is internal cost. The city attorney's office had to hire outside legal counsel to assist in the review. And there are city documents have to be prepared, resolutions uh, and public hearing notices, uh, ordinances, et cetera. So that 10,000 of that uh, is, is a city born cost up to 10,000, thus the 40,000 in total. Does that help yeah. answer? Yes. And when would they have to pay this money back? So uh, the uh, Madam, Madam Mayor, uh, Council Member Alejandro Gutierrez, uh, the the thirty thousand we haven't negotiated. Uh, they have proposed paying that off over the first several years of of the uh, of the assessment district. Um, if they only uh, if they only have an annual budget of three hundred thousand and we required the thirty thousand in in year one, that would be ten percent of their budget. And so um, I think. The next steps going forward, council is going to see this if they are successful and in, in going forward through the, all the, the steps going forward. Uh, the council will see this multiple times through the formation process. So there has to be resolutions of intent to go through the ballot. There has to be uh, public notices, et cetera. And one of those uh, council review processes will be the management plan. We will present uh, the, the repayment uh, terms in that management plan. So it will be clear to both the, uh, the council as well as to the property owners how much of their annual assessments will be having to be repaid at what what's under what schedule. And council Perfect. does have discretion to modify that. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Gutierrez. Mr. Jordan, questions? Madam Mayor, I just wanted to also um, comment on your question on disestablishment. There's, there's alternative methods to do that. One would be there's disaffected um, out of sorts members of the, the PBID that would actually reach that level. But there's also an alternative where the city council at its own discretion could also initiate a disestablishment too. So if we or whoever at that time as council members and mayor are hearing things that rise to the level that we don't think um, things are going well, we can, we could also initiate that on our own. Okay. Thanks. Thanks everyone for answering my questions. Are there any other questions? 
before we ask for public comment. Ms. Gorman, uh, are people uh, on the call, anyone raising their hands to speak on this item? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have four people who have indicated they wish to speak. Great. Uh, another, another person just added. We have Anna Marie Gott, Francois John, Rick Lemo, Robert Ludwig, and Trey Pinner. Anna Marie Gott, I'm going to send you your pin in the app. We'll come back to you. So now we'll go to Francois John. Francois John. Please go ahead. Yes, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay, great. Yes, Madam Mayor and uh, City Council members and Jason, thanks for your, um, your well done uh, introduction. Um, I'm a, uh, I've been a commercial real estate agent for the last 30 years here in Santa Barbara, um, representing owners and tenants. Uh, I also happen to live in Montecito and I'm also on the Coast Village Association. I've been very involved with this PBID process. I was one of three of the people that reached out to most of the owners on Coast Village Road to see if we got initial support. And I can tell you it was overwhelmingly positive. Um, there's been uh, no shortage of people asking me over the years, why did the medians look so, uh, I could say unlandscaped would be a, a, a diplomatic way. Why doesn't Coast Village Road have better lighting? Can we make this place look, you know, even more inviting for the city? It's such a jewel for the city. We have so many people that visit us. And uh, that's what kind of got this whole process going with Trey and Bob and others on the association. And we're very excited to get to where we are at this point. Um, and I can tell you, I've also was one of the people that would uh, call all the property owners and ask them for donations to get the holiday decorations up every single year. And it's it's really difficult, um, especially in the last few years through the fires, the mudslides, the pandemic, and, and God knows what's gonna happen to us when the 101 gets uh, widened. So Coast Village Road's been, you know, um, it's, had its, uh, it's had its licks recently, and I'm very excited to see that we could get, or have the possibility of getting a sustainable and consistent revenue source for the road that would help the city, the community, the owners, the tenants, and have that area really uh, shine like it should for our city. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much. Another speaker? Our next speaker is Rick Lemo. Rick Lemo, please go ahead. Good afternoon, uh, mayor and council members and uh, also another thank you to the uh, subcommittee who took a look at this earlier today and I'll keep my my comments very brief. I am one of the uh, members of our uh, Coast Village Association board and one of the few members who has uh, sat as president of uh, either community benefit district or business improvement districts. I've actually found three of them and will tell you that this is a tremendous boost, not just in morale, but in actual feet walking to businesses and ringing cash registers. And it really helps everyone. It helps tenants first. It helps guests second, because they're in an atmosphere that they think is worthy of them spending their time and their money. And eventually it will help a property owner as well. But what I, why I say eventually is it's only helping a property owner uh, long-term up the road when they value their property. But each and every day, it helps a tenant know that you don't have to go through bake sales and fundraising and you name it uh, just to get to consistent holiday decor or to get to promotional uh, things such as the taste of Coach Village Road. Um, this is something that everyone rallies around. We have a tremendous opportunity in that we're in Santa Barbara and Santa Barbara County and uh, being part of the Montecito area there. Um, it's, it's an aesthetically beautiful place and we need to live up to that. And this will help us do that. What's nice is we don't just deal with safety and making, feel, make, making folks feel comfortable when we're there, but we have a board that is active and listens to the business owners and the tenants, as well as guests to find out what we can do better. And this 
helps us get there, particularly after, uh, as the owner of the Miramar has said, the area has gone through fires, floods, um, you name it, it's happened on Coast Village Road, followed up by COVID. And this is a way to help us help ourselves. We step up and we get the job done and really appreciate you for your time and your review today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Speaker. Our next speaker is Robert Ludwig. Robert Ludwig, please go ahead. Robert Ludwig, please go ahead. Um, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council Members. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this matter. Uh, it's actually exciting that after many years of thinking about it, many years of dreaming and planning it, and then the last year or so of actual effort, um, that we're at this place where the city of Santa Barbara uh, is considering an ordinance that will, yes, initially uh, speak to a plan that we have underway at Coast Village, but as we've said before, does we hope have application in other areas and uh, so i am thrilled by that and i want to thank you because there is some risk I, I i get that it's in the tone of comments and questions i think you do your job well when you ask the kinds of clarifying questions and we make a better ordinance that's adapted to santa barbara so well done city council mayor and uh, staff uh, let me speak to three things um the management of our district uh, that we anticipate having will be an entity that will be reformed. Essentially, our board gets reformed into an entity that is legally the type that can manage an assessment district. And then that board sits as the governing board with a steering committee that is made up of uh, everybody and anybody. All stakeholders are eligible. And we think in particular that retailers, restaurant owners, uh, residents in the area and and property owners will sit on the steering committee. They will make the decisions of uh, what things we spend money on, how much those are, and when that budget is devised, it has much ownership across all stakeholders. So that's a, uh, a safeguard that this is going to be a community effort. Then it is managed by our own locals. We do not hire a consultant. Our consultant who's gotten us to this point is just a pilot on the riverboat. As soon as we get through these shoals, that pilot jumps off and we, we command our own vessel going forward. So thank you for that. And, and uh, again, I just wanna say that uh, we commit to being available to the rest of the city, any other neighborhood or business corridor that wants to go to school on what we do uh, pioneers will have a few arrows in our back. That's fine. We will take our experience and translate it for the benefit of the city. I've made that pledge in public. I make it again. Uh, so uh, thank you for your undertaking this matter. We look forward to this uh, being a success that you can brag about your city. Thanks. Another speaker? Next speaker is Trey Pinner, and then final speaker is Anna Marie Gott. Trey Pinner, please go ahead. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council and staff. Uh, I also, also too want to thank you for all the work that you've done uh, in helping our association get to this point. And I, I really want to echo Mr. Ledwick's comments uh, of what he said as our pledge to help any other uh, area of the city that would like to um, learn from our our hopeful success here, and we're excited to maybe provide that opportunity to others. I did want to just say I also want to thank the um, ordinance committee for hearing some of our recommendations and taking action on those. Um, the, the discussion was good, and I really appreciate those thoughtful comments. And we think what you have provided us. Uh, will make us successful and ultimately all of us successful. So thank you for that. I did just want to also recognize that, as many have said, we've been through a lot. I mean, you probably heard flood, fire, and pandemic way too much, but 
it's been real stuff, but you know, uh, business has not always been easy even before those things. It's been a lot of work to be a successful business at any time. And we know before us over the next potential decade of construction with the widening of highway 101, we're going to be in for also a lot of, uh, difficult times for Coast Village Road. And we feel that uh, this ordinance that will allow us to help to create a new uh, community benefit district will be vital for us over the next decade. So we certainly hope we make the five years and continue there on so we can help uh, the tenants, the residents, uh, and the property owners of Coast Village Road make it through that very difficult process. We're gonna need to promote, I don't know how many remember you know, the removal of the lights on Highway 101 and how difficult it was for Lower State Street, they needed help constantly. Well, we're probably gonna need some of that same ingenuity and and promotion and, and ways of getting uh, our area to remain successful over those next 10 years. And we think that will do this. Um, you are basically, at this moment, uh, we are hopeful that you vote in the affirmative of the recommendation to give us a tool, to give us a tool to help, go help build a great community benefit district. We've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we've invested $30,000 today and we're probably gonna have to invest an additional $30,000 on top of your grateful loan. We thank you for that, but it's gonna take more, but we're ready to do it. And um, we just thank you for the opportunity. That's all we ask for is an opportunity to be successful. So thank you for that. Thank you. One more speaker, a couple more. Our final speaker is Anna Marie Gott. Anna Marie Gott, please go ahead. Good afternoon, council members. I just wanna remind you about uh, what happened the last time that there was a, um, a business improvement district actually recommended or even discussed in Santa Barbara. And that was in 2015. I don't know if any of you remember it, but you know, some people actually were protesting in front of El Bajio and they actually prevented people from going in and eating. And then all of the city council members showed up the next day to actually order lunch and, and, and eat in the midst of protesters. And do you know who the only person was? that did not actually attend that particular um, event, I guess you could say, or gathering with the other council members and mayor. Um, that was council member Murillo. And the individuals that organized uh, the protests were uh, uh, Poder, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it was um, because it was, everyone was saying that it was gentrifying Milpa. And all they wanted to do was to clean up trash and have some lighting and organize, you know, uh, uh, the holiday parties a little bit better with closing down State Street for Christmas and trick or treating. That's what they wanted to do. And so I just want to, you know, contrast to what we've got here with the Montecito Association um, individuals, as well as everyone that over at Coast Village Road really wanting this particular business improvement district. It's light and day uh, difference in terms of how the people are accepting it in terms of the business owners in the community versus the disinformation that we heard about in 2015 uh, and the protests in front of El Bajio and the people that were basically ostracized in the community for daring to actually want a business improvement district. Um, I would like to uh, just recommend that you, because of the pandemic, because of our unstable economic uh, future here in, 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 the, in the United States for many people, and because of the expenditures and changes that are actually happening um, down with the roundabout uh, and the changes in terms of the, the six way uh, you know, interest, interest into that roundabout. I really think that we need to be cautious about having uh, a time extensions of 15 years and that we should err on the side of caution of no more than 10. 
And I think that we need to be very cautious when we're talking about anything re regarding removal of parking, if any of that is a possibility with this uh, with this particular bid or the use Thanks of the so right much. of way, not at par fair market value. Thank, Thank you. you. Did anyone else raise their hands? No, Madam Mayor, that's the final speaker. Okay, we'll close public comment and we'll go to our comments. And I, I will just say that I did go to El Bajio and order some burritos just to set the record straight on that. Um, Mr. Jordan, do you wanna go first? I see you there in line first. Okay. Happy to go first, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess, and uh, as somebody who a couple of weeks ago, was um, uh, very interested in the nuts and bolts of this and how it was going to play out. Um, I just uh, want to be clear that I think that uh, we've reached a, a real um, workable balance in the way the district would be formed and the way it would perform and the way it would renew. Um, I had a lot of concern over the, the percentage threshold going in, um, that threshold has nothing to do with what the um, uh, subsequent ballot minimum must be, which is 50%. And I think the, I'm, I'm looking at both the, as a, as a way of balance, the, the starting 30% being balanced is once it's in place by a lowered 30% amount for people who are unhappy with it and wish to, to de-establish de de it. So to me, those two numbers are really in balance and they put the ball in the court of um, Mr. Penner, Mr. Dijon, Mr. Lamo, and Mr. Ledwick and and their, um, their Coast Village Road cohorts. Um, I, I, I would like to commend them. I think they've, uh, they've shown flexibility to our concerns and at the same time been uh, willing to um, uh, go out on and take the risk to do this. Um, and I also think the, the comment in, in commenting on a longer term or a shorter term for the re-up, once it gets its legs under it for five years, there are so many efficiencies to letting the renewal be as long as possible, both in the, the immediate cost to the district to go through that process, how many times it has to subsequently do that over the longer term, and more importantly, the ability to leverage both your current um, assessment uh, values uh, and your future assessment values to make real change rather than just find yourself hamstrung by uh, reduced amounts of potential income over a period of time. So I, I, whatever concerns I had a couple of weeks ago, I have, um, I have gotten right down in the weeds on this and I can unequivocally say uh, today that I'm really happy with the result of this and I will uh, vote to adopt as recommended by the ordinance committee. Thank you. Okay, okay, Ms. Nettan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so just, um, I, I will articulate what it was that came out of the ordinance committee because the staff recommendation is still up on the screen. And I think that we're moving away from, the ordinance committee moved away from that recommendation. Um, I just wanna first say that the Coast Village Association has been at this for a very long time. They have done uh, the legwork for years, uh, getting support for this and already, um, getting their own donations, not just for this process so far that they've put forward in good faith, but also for their own holiday de um, decorations and events and Taste of Coast Village and, and different activities that have gone on. So I think um, Coast Village Association has already sort of led the way and, and shown what they do when they have opportunities to reinvest in themselves. And this is just allowing that process to move forward to go to a ballot. So it doesn't, as you know, it doesn't um, instigate or it doesn't um, have this go forward without it going to a vote. Um, so I just, um, 
in the interest of that, we want this to be successful. We are providing a loan and, and we do want this to come back to us. I think the threshold of the 30% was reasonable for initiation and then 30% for dissolution, if, if that's the direction that it headed to. Um, I did, as a Chair Jordan of the Ordinance Committee articulated, I did hope for more than a five-year renewal for the first um, round, but I think we did come to a, a good a good place where um, if it's five years at first, and then I think the way that we worded it was up to 20 years or the um, allowable term by the state, I think was how it ended up um, being recommended out of ordinance committee. Um, I think we're just allowing this district to invest in themselves and their beautification and their traffic safety. This is something they do anyway. I'd stand out there and, and try and direct traffic. This just gives a more formal um, method of being able to do that, holiday events, um, public arts. And I think it'll be an example of being um, managed by locals. And I think this really could be scaled to different areas of the city. And to um, Ms. Scott's comment, I, I believe, I mean, that was a, a different uh, situation. And on um, Milpas, that was a business improvement district, and this is a, a property um, assessment. It's a, it's a different mechanism, and I think that may just be a different situation. And this will move forward, hopefully, and then we'll, we'll see what needs to be adjusted or how it could be applied in other places in the city. So um, I think I just wanted to clarify that we went with a 30% um, to initiate 30% dissolution with the five-year initial term um, with up to 20-year renewal um, without petition upon written request of property owners. And I'm, I'm happy to make that motion to, to move that forward. Sure, I'm pretty sure we know. Okay, thanks. Mr. Friedman, are you a seconder or? Uh, yeah, I'll second that that motion. I, I support it. So, your comments, then? Well, thank you. Um, I, first, I want to thank the Coast Village Association members uh, for doing all this legwork and bringing this forward. And I also want to thank my uh, colleagues on the ordinance committee for really working to find that that compromise that not only will allow this to be successful and for the city to be a partner here and moving this forward, uh, but also with the enabling ordinance, it is something that will be uh, usable for other districts. Um, based on last week's discussion, I know there was a lot of, of movement, but it, it seems like there was a good compromise that came to be that will not only benefit Coast Village Road, but also other areas. So I really just want to uh, thank all those involved in reaching this compromise. I especially am pleased with the 30% petition. I like the idea of the, of the, of the dissolution, the 30% as well and then um, the ability after five years to come in and uh, without going forward with the petition. So all in all, I think this is good moving forward and I uh, look forward to seeing uh, what's going to come out of this. I think it will improve the area greatly uh, anytime um, the community can invest in itself. I think it's a great thing. So thank you very much, Madam. Thanks. Ms. Gutierrez, you ready? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to thank um, city staff, Mr. Harris, for his involvement in getting this to council and um, those community members involved as well from the Coast Village um, Road Association. And I look forward to someday being able to apply something like this in my district um, and in other districts as, as well. Um, like Mr. Friedman said and my other council members, this is a great move to move forward and um, really help the business, our local businesses. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Gutierrez, did everybody chime in? Uh, I'll be voting for the motion and I do look forward to the rest of the process. I would really look forward to seeing the management plan. Um, I would like to see more outreach to the community, to the, the tenants of those, of those buildings, uh, to the residents of the area. Um, I'm interested in the in the, the uh, range of assessments and um, a budget and and exactly uh, how the money will be spent. So, uh, but at this time, this seems like a good idea to put it forward. I thank the Coast Village Road Association for their work, Coast Village Association, and then and also staff. 
um, for for bringing us to this point. Mr. Mr. Gutierrez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, I just want to say that I'm excited about this and and uh, and looking forward to the success of all these businesses. But I also want to reiterate what I said during the um, ordinance committee meeting to my colleagues there uh, that um, a, a large portion of the community is voicing their opinion about why their business district isn't getting aid from the city. Um, so I just want to throw this out there. It's it's obviously another conversation to have at, on, at another time, but maybe we can all get together and have some kind of discussion as to how we can aid all these different um, districts and see what, if, if at all is possible. And I'll be voting for the motion, thank you. Okay, super. Mr. Jordan? I just uh, remind the motion maker and the seconder if they could add in the recommendations of the staff, staff recommendations for the funding, the two points on the funding. I didn't hear that. I assumed that, but um, Ms. Sen and Mr. Friedman, good with you? Yes. Let's go ahead and take a vote then. Thanks. Madam Mayor and, and Council, did uh, Mr. Kalan need to read any revisions to the ordinance into the record? Uh, Mr. Kalan, did we articulate it well so, enough? Uh, Madam Mayor, on introduction, we don't need to read it. I will have them in the second reading document next week. Very good, thank you. Um, so this is a motion by Council Member Snedden, seconded by, by Council Member Friedman. I'll read the motion here, but but please jump in and, and correct me as appropriate. Um, for a 30% initiation, 30% dissolution, five-year initial term with up to 20-year renewal without a petition upon written request of the property owners and the staff recommendations for funding. Sounds okay. good. Very good. Yeah. Councilmember Snedden. Yes. Councilmember Friedman. Yes. Councilmember Jordan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Oscar Gutierrez. Aye. Councilmember Alejandro Gutierrez. Yes. Councilmember Harmon. Yes. And Mayor Murillo. Aye. That was unanimous. Thanks so much, Ms. Clerk. We'll close this item with thanks to everyone who participated and we'll go to uh, council committee assignment reports. Um, I have some, Ms. Snedden has some, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just have one. It was a slower week this week. I, on my family and I on Friday attended the Black is Beautiful showcase um, put on by Healing Justice. And, and I, it's still online. And there was so much about Santa Barbara history um, that was really well laid out and, and our, our local poets and artists and then also um, nationally. But it was, a, it was a great celebration of our, of our, of our local Black history. Yeah, um, the poet and historian uh, Sojourner Kincaid Roll uh, had produced a, a presentation about um, the churches and the different uh, uh, landmarks in Santa Barbara reflecting Black history and culture. It was really a, a very nice presentation with, with song and spoken word and then with the history uh, presentation uh, interspersed. Very, very well done. Um, I attended the um, Santa Barbara seed swap this year, of course, was online. Um, they managed to swap seeds in a COVID safe way. Um, but one of their awards was a local food hero award, which went to the Santa Barbara farmers market. And I was uh, proud last uh, Saturday to, uh, to be there for that presentation from the seed swap people to farmers market. Um, the downtown Santa Barbara had its annual awards uh, event last Wednesday, and um, I gave the Harriet Miller Youth Leadership Award to Dorian uh, Larbig, a San Marcos high school student, and I have, she has volunteered 590 hours of community service 
done all kinds of stuff, been a junior lifeguard and a, gr a Girl Scout troop ambassador. But she also um, created a program raising awareness about mylar balloon of plastic pollution in the uh, marine environment. So uh, I congratulate Ms. Larvig again, and we'll watch her successes as she goes through life. Um, the Business Advisory Task Force met last Friday, and we had a presentation from the uh, Chamber of Commerce, which is doing um, a, a business recruitment um, program, uh, getting businesses to move to Santa Barbara. And they will be giving that presentation to our council in, in due time. And if there's no other uh, reports, I don't see anybody else popping on. Uh, I'd like to close the meeting uh, in memory of the 500,000 people who've died uh, from COVID-19 in the US. Our uh, flags were uh, flying at half staff uh, last week. And I know there's been more deaths uh, since then. We'd also like to honor the memory of Robert Lagomarsino, uh, who passed away. And he was uh, a congressman and a state senator uh, from this area. And uh, some folks sent me in some information. I'm just going to read about this man who authored legislation ranging from marine wilderness and wild and scenic river protections to returning the harbor's uh, Naval Reserve building to the city. And he also helped create the Channel Islands National Park. Um, someone else writes that he was shy uh, and not a self promoter and that his strong willed wife Norma perhaps had something to do with that. Uh, he understood the legislative system and could recall years later how a bill wove its way through the State House or Congress. Um, he was liked by both sides. And this allowed him to get significant, complicated, and lasting legislation through the system. And we honor him today uh, for his public service, Mr. Lago Marcino. So thanks, everybody. We're adjourning this meeting. Thank you.